In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use Blender to make this animation of text falling apart and dissolving. I'll be using Blender version 2.69. Let's start by creating a new project. So from the File menu, select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. The default scene has a cube that's been already added. We're going to be using this cube later, so let's go ahead and set the material for it. So right-click on it to make sure that it's selected. Then click on the Material button. Now come up here and change this from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Then click the Use Nodes button. I'm going to keep the default diffuse surface and I'm going to change the color to yellow. Then click here to rename this material. I'm just going to name it yellow. Now grab the red arrow and move the cube out of the way. Next, let's switch to orthographic mode. You can do that by pressing 5 on the number pad. Now let's add some text. So press Shift A and select text. I'll zoom in to see this better. Now rotate the text by 90 degrees on the X axis by pressing R, then X, then 90, then Enter. Now to change the text, go into edit mode by pressing Tab, then backspace to delete, and then enter your new text. Now press Tab again to return to object mode. Now come over here and click on the Object Data button. Set the extrude value to 0 0.05. This will give the text a thickness. I'm also going to bevel the edges a little, and I can do that by setting the bevel depth value. I'm going to use 0 0.02. Then set the resolution to 2 to round out the beveled edges. Now let's set the text material. So click on the Material button. Now click on this little button on the left side of the New button and select Yellow. This is the same material that we used for the cube. Next we need to convert this text into a mesh. To do that, press Alt-C and select Mesh from Curve Meta Surf Text. Since we're going to be creating an animation, we'll be using the timeline. We can use the timeline to set and control which frames are being displayed. The green line is the time cursor and it shows the current frame that we're on. If you click on the timeline, then the time cursor will go to the location that you click. If you hold down the left mouse button, then the time cursor will follow the mouse. This value here displays the current frame number. If you enter a value, then the time cursor will move to that position. If you click on the Render button, it will display some animation settings. These values set the start and end frames. These are the same values that you see down here. Our animation is going to be 135 frames long, so set the end value to 135. We're using a frame rate of 24 frames per second, and so our animation will be a little over 5 seconds long. Now we're going to add a particle system to the text. So click on the Particle button. You may need to resize this panel to bring the Particle button into view. Next, press the plus button to add a particle system. This value is used to set the number of particles. We're going to be changing this to a larger value later, but for now, keep it set to 1000. As soon as I change this to a large value later on, Blender will start to respond more slowly because there will be a lot more geometry present. So 1000 will be fine for now. The start value is used to specify at which frame the particles will start to be emitted. Set this value to 20. Set the end value to 30. With these settings, the particles will start to appear at frame 20, and by frame 30, all of the particles will be present. The lifetime value specifies how long the particles will be visible. Set this value to 100 frames. Now all the particles will be present by frame 30, and then 100 frames later, at frame 130, they will all be gone. Next, make sure that the Faces button is selected so that the particles will be emitted from the surface of the mesh faces. There should also be check marks next to Random and Even Distribution. Click the Random button here so that the particles will be emitted from random locations on the text. To see what the particles look like so far, come down here and press this button which will set the time cursor to frame 1. Then press the play button. Then press the pause button to stop it. 
I'll do this again. Now come down here to the Render section. Click on the Object button so that each particle will be rendered as an object. Now click in this entry box and select Cube. Now each particle will be rendered as the yellow cube that we made at the start of this video. But the particles are too big, so set the size to 0 0.01. Now open up the Field Weight section. Click on the gravity value and set it to 0. Now I'll reset the animation to frame 1 and play it again. You'll notice that since we set the gravity to 0 that the particles no longer fall down. Now come up to the Velocity section. Change the normal value from 1 to 0. Now I'll reset the animation to frame 1 and play it again. This time you'll notice that the particles stay near the surface of the text. Next we're going to add a force field which we will use to move the particles. So press Shift A and select Force Field and then Turbulence. Then grab the red arrow and drag the force field to the center of the text. To set the strength of the turbulence, click on the Physics button. Then set the Strength value to 2. Now I'll reset the animation to frame 1 and play it again. This is looking good so far, so now would be a good time for me to save my work. So from the File menu, I'll select Save As. I'm going to name this Dissolve.Blend. Now we need to control the visibility of the original text. So right-click on the text to select it, then click on the Particle button. Come down to the Render section. When the emitter has a check mark next to it, the text will be visible in the final render. We're going to control this check mark using keyframes, so reset the animation to frame 1 by clicking this button. Make sure that there is a check mark next to emitter. Then hover the cursor over the check mark and press the letter I on the keyboard. The check mark box should turn yellow, which means that a keyframe has been added. If you move the green time cursor, you should see a yellow line at frame 1, which means that a keyframe has been added to that frame. Now set the timeline to frame 30. Then hover the cursor over the emitter check mark and press the I key again. This added a second keyframe. Now set the timeline to frame 31. Then remove the emitter check mark. Then hover the cursor over the empty check mark box and press the I key. This added a third keyframe. So now when we render the final animation, the original text will be visible from frame 1 through frame 30. But at frame 31, the text will no longer be visible since the emitter will be unchecked at frame 31. It should not be noticeable when the text disappears because by frame 30, all of the particles will be present. Now let's also set some keyframes to control the size of the particles. If we shrink the particles during the animation, it will look like they are dissolving. So set the timeline to frame 70. Then hover the cursor over the size value and press the I key. Now set the timeline to frame 130. Set the size to 0 0.001. Hover the cursor over the size value and press the I key again. So now, after frame 70, the particles will start to shrink until they reach their smallest size at frame 130. So to summarize what we have so far, the particles will start to appear at frame 20, and by frame 30, all of the particles will be present. At frame 31, the visibility of the original text is turned off, then the size of the particles will shrink between frame 70 and 130. Also, because we set the lifetime of the particles to 100, the particles will start to disappear at frame 120 and finish disappearing by frame 130. So next, let's add a floor for the text to sit on. 
So press Shift A and select Mesh and then Plane. Grab the blue arrow and position the plane just below the bottom of the text. Now scale the plane up in size by pressing S, then 100, then Enter. To set the material for the plane, click the Material button and then click New. Set the surface type to Mix Shader so that we can combine two different shaders. Set the first shader to Diffuse. Set the second shader to Glossy. Set the roughness value of the glossy shader to 0. Also set the FAC value to 0.3 so that the diffuse shader will be stronger than the glossy shader. I'm also going to leave the color of both of these shaders set to white. Next we need to enable collision to prevent the particles from moving through the floor of the animation. To do that, click on the physics button. You may need to resize this panel to bring the physics button into view. Now click on the Collision button. Next, let's set up the light source. So press 3 on the number pad to switch to right side view. I'm going to zoom out a little and then pan the view until I can see the light source. Now right click on the lamp to select it. Then grab the green arrow and drag the lamp over here. Then come over to the right and click on the Object Data button. Make sure that the point lamp is selected and then set the size to 3. Now click on the Use Nodes button. I'm going to set the Strength value to 5000. Next, let's set up the camera view. So switch to camera view by pressing 0 on the number pad. I'll zoom in a little. When I'm in camera view, I like to lock the camera to the view. To do that, press N to open the Properties panel and put a check mark next to lock camera to view. Then press in again to close the properties panel. Now I can zoom, pan, and rotate the view while looking through the camera. Now I'll position the text. Now let's change the background color to black. So click on the world button. Then click on the gray color and change it to black. Next, let's increase the number of particles that we're using. So right click on the text to select it. Then click on the particle button. I'm going to use 20,000 particles. You will probably want to experiment with this value. If you have fewer text characters, then you can use fewer particles. If your font size is larger, then you may want more particles. But avoid making this value too large, however, because it will not only make rendering times really long, but it can also slow down the response time of Blender, which will make the interface feel sluggish. On my computer, even this value of 20,000 that I'm using makes the Blender interface feel sluggish. That's why I saved the step until I'm close to the end. It can help to speed up the interface, however, if I set the timeline to frame 1. This is because the particles don't start to appear until frame 20. Now let's set up some rendering options. So click on the Render button. Then open the Sampling section. I'm going to set the number of render samples to 50. Since we're going to be rendering 135 frames, I'm going to keep this value pretty low to help minimize the rendering time. Now come up to the Output section. This is where you set the directory where your animation will be saved. On my computer, the contents of this default temp directory are deleted when Blender closes, so be sure and select a different directory. To do that, click on this button and select a directory. Next, click here to set the file format. There are multiple movie formats that you can choose from. I'm going to use OGG Theora. Now we're ready to render the animation, but I'm going to save the project first. It's a good idea to save the project before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. To render the animation, click on the Animation button. If you want to abort the rendering before it's finished, then press the Escape key. Since this is going to take a while, I'm going to pause the video until it's done. The animation is done rendering now. 
It took a little over an hour to render. This is the final frame that was rendered. It doesn't have any particles, so it looks pretty plain. If you want to return to the previous view, you can click this button and select 3D View. To view the animation, click on the Play button. If you're using an older version of Blender that doesn't have the Play button, then go to the Render menu and click on Play Rendered Animation. The animation will play through to the end and then start back at the beginning again. Now if you open up Windows Explorer or something equivalent, you can navigate to your movie file. Now assuming that you have a video player that will play the movie format that you specified, you can now play your movie. I've set up this player to repeat the video in a loop so that it will keep repeating. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.